There's a brand new team on the field in the Wabash Valley. Unmatched in speed, aggressiveness, and accuracy. is the new team, the new Center 10 team. A good news organization requires good people, and lots of them. And this group of professionals makes up one of the largest news staffs in downstate Indiana and Illinois. On a given day, this team covers more breaking news in more Wabash Valley cities than all of the competition. In fact, this team takes pride in knowing that they're always in most of those places that their competition isn't. This is the only Wabash Valley news team with its own troubleshooter, its own consumer affairs reporter, the only team with reporters that specialize in human interest stories, women's news, education, and science and medicine. This is the new team that the people of the Wabash Valley are turning to for information about their communities, their jobs, their lives. This is the team that's bringing it home. Troubleshooter Ken Walker. Everyone has a problem at one time or another, and usually uh, that problem ends up being something they can't handle themselves, and that's where I come into play being the troubleshooter. Uh, with the paperwork we're currently faced with in government and just about everywhere, my job basically boils down then to just cutting through the paperwork and finding an answer and uh, getting them a uh, resolution to the problem. Consumer reporter Tony Trueblood. Everybody, no matter who it is, is a consumer. Consumerism touches everybody. Therefore, everybody has the same problems that they have to deal with. Everybody has to handle money either directly or indirectly. And uh, my reports are aimed at helping people decide how to get the best buy for their dollar. Just Folks reporter, Clayton Taylor. The important thing about any sort of feature writing is just a natural curiosity. I, I would say it, it's not a, an occupation that you can really enjoy. It's, it's a pain in the neck. You've got uh, deadlines. You never have enough time. It's a pain in the neck, but I, I, I love it. It's like Listerine. But if you come in with an open-eyed uh, state of curiosity, just the capability of being amazed at uh, what people are capable of doing, then you can relate that to other people, and hopefully they'll be amazed too. Women's reporter Ruth Ann Gordon. Uh, everything uh, is now geared towards that there's, there's nothing that isn't news, but it uh, pertains to women. Everything. And it's more and more like this, and we see more and more uh, emphasis placed on issues uh, concerning women. Government reporter Tom Anderson. I really enjoy covering politics on the local level. I find it very uh, exciting for me to be able to talk to some of these people, the people that make the decisions that affect our lives here in the Vigo County area and the Terre Haute community. Education reporter Becky Chrisman. The people that I work with seem to realize that I haven't been out of school for that long, and they realize that I remember what it's like to be there, and so I can relate to a lot of the problems that the kids have, and I can also see educators having some of the problems that maybe the people that had taught me a few years ago were having too. 
People in the News reporter, Sally Ingram. News can be very depressing, and my job is to find the lighter side of the news. I present people and what they do. When talking with someone and, uh, you know, getting to know them after the interview, that's, that's the best part for me. I think uh, a lot of times I'll leave uh, the microphone on and the, and the tape rolling because that's, that's when you really catch someone uh, when they're the most natural. Science and medicine reporter Brent Zorney. I think there is a lot of interest in uh, the field of science and medicine, mainly because uh, our society is so technologically oriented. I think we are a gadget-oriented society. I enjoy doing the weather. Uh, it's a continual challenge to me. Um, it's a continuing story. Sportscaster Steve Snyder. This is a very sports-crazy area and trying to get everything in and cover it fairly and completely is uh, quite a challenge. It, it makes it a challenge for us to not just televise the games or uh, give the final scores. We want to get out there and get under it. We want to do something that the other stations in town don't do. We want to give the inside story, and I think we do it. Movie critic Marlene Lambert. Take the cost of a movie. It's quite expensive if you take a couple or, or four people to go see a movie. And I think that a movie should be worthwhile. It should be entertaining. It doesn't always have to have a message. But again, I think that I just have to uh, have a responsibility to our viewers and let them know what's good and what's bad. Agribusiness expert Wayne Jenkins. Uh, despite having only about 6 to 7 percent of the population around here, agriculture remains pretty much at the forefront of our uh, economic lifeblood here in the Wabash Valley. The service we have in the line of farm broadcasting actually encompasses farm and town both because for us agriculture and the economy of our rural population are intertwined. Meteorologist Valerie Jones. The thing that fascinates me the most about the weather here in the Midwest is the fact that it changes constantly. Every day is different from the day before, so it's a challenge for me to get the forecast correct all through the year. Each year is different from the year before. One year we have a bad winter, the next year we don't. Sometimes the summers are turbulent, so it's a challenge to be a good forecaster for the Midwest. First edition anchor, Bob Koob. The advantages of doing an early morning news broadcast in my mind at least, outweigh the disadvantages. Sure, the hour is early, and it's sometimes depressing to realize that I'm up and functioning while the rest of the city is comfortably tucked away in their warm beds. But the early morning shift is, to my mind anyway, vitally necessary, because news stories are always breaking, and many of the biggest stories often break overnight. Sportscaster, Bob Forbes. It entails uh, a lot of traveling, traveling in conditions sometimes that uh, are not the kind of conditions you'd like to travel in, like bad weather to flights to basketball games. But I do enjoy it, or I wouldn't be doing it, uh, covering Indiana State's basketball games, of course, on TV and radio, and also the uh, football games, uh, makes for a lot of excitement. News producer Terry McCorvey. Basically, my job is to tie all the loose ends into the package you see on the air without everything coming undone in the process. I have to have a newscast every night at 6. No matter what else happens during the day, at 6 that night, there will be a newscast. If I do my job well, then we catch the mistakes before they go on the air. So the newscast you see comes off without a hitch and hopefully informs you as well. Anchors Harry Fry and Mark Colbrick. <laughs>
In the broadcasting business, there are some things that are just too important to leave to the inexperienced, things like weather. Weather can be a killer. In the Wabash Valley, there are only two broadcasters that are certified as experts by the American Meteorological Society, only two who can rightfully wear the title meteorologist, the news center's Wayne Jenkins and Valerie Jones. This seal is your guarantee that one of our professionals is on the job. Wayne and Valerie and the AMS, because some things are just too important. In the broadcasting business, there are some things that are just too important to leave to the inexperienced, things like farming. Thousands of valley residents depend on the land for their livelihood. And over the years, these same people have also come to depend on an area broadcaster to keep them on top of what's happening in the world of agribusiness. That kind of trust has earned that broadcaster the National Association of Farm Broadcasters seal of good practice. Who is he? News Center 10's Wayne Jenkins. Wayne and farming and the NAFB. Some things are just too important. starved. Woo! What a day. We've been all over the area. Level two, we've got a big one across the river. Let's get it on. Got the story. We're coming in. Level two, there's an accident down south. Get on it. We're on our way. Got it covered. Now we're going to take time to eat. Level two, there's a burglary downtown. Moving. Oh. Good evening. Hi, Mark. Hey, Dad, look, there's Harry Mark from News Entertainment. Oh, boy. <coughs> uh, okay, then. And now, here's tonight's news. Watch, dear. When Harry and Mark give the news, it's important. Harry Fry and Mark Kobrick on News Center 10. They'll bring the news home to you. Hamburger, dear? Sure is a nice day. Look, George, there's Valerie Jones from News Center 10. Hi, everybody. Uh, better get inside. It's going to rain in about five minutes. What do you mean? It's a beautiful day. Dear, if Valerie says it's going to rain in five minutes, it's going to rain in five minutes. Valerie Jones and weather. What kind of dressing you want in your salad, Valerie? News Center 10 brings the news home to you. Once in a while, Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Mark. you find a couple of guys who just naturally work well together, who complement each other in every way. Like Harry Fry and Mark Kobrick, a natural sort of communication you just don't find every day. It's no accident that more people are watching News Center 10. 
Good evening, Good evening I'm, I'm Mark. Harry Fry and Mark Kobrick. Good evening, Good evening I'm, I'm Mark. Your best choice, naturally. Have you ever been one of those days when nothing goes right? Sometimes the most natural partners get a little off in their timing. But even Harry Fry and Mark Kobrick can find their finely tuned teamwork slightly off target. But when you're a good news team, you can always hey guys, pull your act together when it counts. Good evening, I'm Harry Fry. And I'm Mark Kobrick. Your you best choice today, naturally. We have more fuel shortages this winter. We knew Harry Fry and Mark Kobrick would work well together. Yeah. We just didn't realize how well. You know, Mark, if we're going to follow up on that story, I think it might be a good idea right now to call 7.30. Okay, we can make it. Thanks. Hey, everybody, they're starting this press conference earlier than they said. Has anybody seen my... Harry Fry and Mark Kobrick. We knew they'd be great together, but they even surprised us. Check them out weeknights at 6 and 11 p.m. They're worth watching.